Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here at Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Accidentally deleted the beginning of this video, so I'm gonna kind of do a recap with what I have. I'm throwing together an aquatic planter and this is essentially the same pot I used in the planter, just a little bit bigger. I have to save this one for a different plant that's coming in the mail in a few days. With my aquatic planters, I usually either just use a garden soil and uh, any type of all natural organic soil, or if I'm lucky and my local pond supply stores have something available, then I will use a pond potting mix from them, as long as it's affordable. Sometimes it's like 30 bucks for a tiny bag, and I don't understand that. I mean, maybe if you're doing like lotuses, you know, really big expensive things, or things that are nutritional hogs, like a water lily, but I mean, you can get the fertilizer to, I'm not gonna, it's fine, don't worry about it. I'm not gonna go down, I'm not gonna rant about that right now. I'm just using a black nursery pot with an all natural organic potting mix, one I haven't tried before, it's the Miracle Girl one, and I just kinda want to try it out and see how it works. That's why I'm using that one instead of using a garden soil or the one that's in the green bags, like nature or something. I've used that one before, it's worked really well. So what I did that got deleted was I took some polyurethane window screening lined the bottom of the pot to keep the soil from going out, and then I filled it up with soil. I only had scraps left of that window screening, so that's why I can't just refilm this part with a different pot and cut in. I used the rest of my scraps. You can use newspaper. I like to actually use the aquatic planters that have all the holes in them and everything, but I just didn't have enough material to hold the soil from going out the holes, since I was working with scraps. But those would work well. You can line them with newspaper, which I don't get a newspaper, but I'm sure I could find some somewhere. Or that window screening, but it needs to be poly, needs to be one that's not metal, because that will rust in the water. Okay, that's enough of staring at this black pot. We'll cut back into whatever I was doing after the footage I deleted. Sorry! Also, just kind of the way things go. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> okay. I know, not the most beautiful thing ever. That's partially because this tut grass that's in the front, this is the baby tut from Proven Winners. That was on clearance. You can see why. So I'm gonna clean that up real quick. Okay, that's a little bit better. Now I just need to top dress this. I wanna put some gravel on top of the soil so if there's like heavy rains or something like that, it's not going to wash everywhere. And here's the part where everyone's gonna make fun of me. Yeah, I know, looks ridiculous, but it's what I had laying around. It's just some old aquarium gravel. I didn't see a reason to go out and spend money on pea gravel or something when I already have this laying around. May as well use it. it I mean, it's pretty. Whatever, it doesn't matter. This pap, 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 this papyrus in the front is a baby tut, and those get a really full sort of mounting habit to them. I'm not even gonna be able to see that gravel here in a few weeks. And in the back there is a canna pretoria. Well, hold on. It was actually sold as a canna tropicana gold. I don't know if there's a difference or if they're just rebranding using the tropicana name, but um, Looks like a Pretoria to me. And then in the very back is Australian Red Canna, which has absolutely beautiful foliage, doesn't it? Now, this is a lot for a smaller planter, but given the time of year, it really shouldn't be a problem. It will get very full, but that's what I want. And then uh, in the fall and winter time, this isn't gonna be perennial where I live. All of these are zone seven and up, except for the Creeping Jenny, which I have over the front. Creeping Jenny will float across the water. It'll spread out across the top here, provide a nice little place for baby fish to hide. And I just pulled that Creeping Jenny out of some other planters I already had put together. That's why they're so tiny, but they grow so incredibly vigorously, especially when you get them put together in an aquatic planter like this. So I don't care about that. They'll fill in and that'll be pretty. This also, I could with the Tut Papyrus. I could come in and cut the entire thing back. It would rebound from that just fine this time of year. It's July, it's warm outside, but I just, I don't wanna do that because I figure it's going to take off faster when it has chlorophyll. There's still some green in there, so I'm just going to leave that. I'll clean up some more over time probably. Not probably, definitely. I just, I need to find my snippers. You know, pruning shears don't work the best for getting small things out like that. That'll certainly look a lot better when that's gone and not in there anymore. But yeah, like I said, I know, very full. But that's okay. It's a little bit later in the season and since they're not perennial here I'm gonna be pulling this apart in the fall Dividing up those cannas and putting them into a dry storage. I'll clean up the roots and or the rhizomes really I'll clean those up 
dry them off and put them someplace cool, dry, and dark for the winter months. The papyrus, I'll probably try and keep going in my grow space. We'll see. Everything in here is marginal. Those cannas, they can grow in the water, uh, even submerged a little bit. This is going to be the entire pot itself, I should say, is going to be probably submerged, I would say, roughly halfway to three quarters of the way and then the rest of that's above so but it could the water could go all the way up there and everything in here would be just fine creeping jenny may not like it as much but the rest of the plants would be okay with it over time those cannas will fill in they'll get nice and tall be able to see them and behind that baby tut a lot better oh and here's a tag for that baby tut i don't have tags for the others they're all gone but it's the graceful grasses baby tut papyrus from proven winners 18 to 24 inches tall full to part sun and the tut is hardy zones nine and up so that's why i was thinking with the tut i might go ahead and try and overwinter that in the growth space whereas the cannas i can just let them go dormant and there that is in the pond if that's what you want to call it should do fine there's some pennywort and a small pot in front of it that will pretty quickly actually that should spread out make a nice carpet on top of the water like i said that rainbow gravel won't even be noticeable once the papyrus kind of spreads and fills out above it i don't have a lot of other plants in here there is a mini cattail right here i don't know oh it does have one one little bitty cattail on there and that's just something i potted up in a hanging basket i didn't do anything special with that one of them was in like one of those cups from lowe's the other i bought pre-potted in a tiny hanging basket moved into the bigger one. And then the carnivorous plants got the Saracenias over there. And this is mostly rainwater in here, so it's fairly soft. TDS is pretty low in my taps. When I have to top it off, I do, because you know, the Saracenias, they don't like hard water with a high TDS. The water is green. I've been, had been keeping it green for the fish because they like it that way. I just got lucky with some green water here. But as the plants are in here, that's probably going to go away because those are going to suck up the nutrients that's letting that happen, which would probably be better for the Saracenias, but they have been growing very, very well with the green water. That was something I was a little bit concerned about, but no, they haven't skipped a beat. I was thinking that the green water might mean that the TDS is too high, but nope, they're doing well, like really well, very, very, very well. I probably put too many in there, which I kind of thought about when I did it, but just like with this one, I was like, you know what? I don't care. I can divide it up if it gets to be too much. <laughs> just like with this one, I do kind of wish I had gone ahead and splurged for the full price baby tut just because it would look so much prettier in the video. But you know what? It was like, I think a dollar. So no, worth it. Just there'll be updates and garden tours and on Instagram and whatnot. And you'll be able to see it's going to look great. If this were a perennial setup, then I would not do this because it would just seem like a pain to have to come out and divide those cannas up every few months because they're such vigorous growers. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I had also thought about putting a uh, Black Ripple Kalakasha in here just for even more contrast. I was like, you know what? Like already kind of pushing it space-wise, so I didn't. And yet the papyrus is planted up a little bit high. It just the root ball was really together. I loosened the outside. I don't want to loosen it too much because, I mean, the plant's already not doing great, right? It'll be okay like that, though. The moisture from the water is going to wick right up there. It'll be good. Be happy plant. There will be updates on my social media, which is linked down below in the description of the video. I'm on Instagram, like, way more than anything else. You know what? Why not give an update now? It's a little bit dark out. Like, 10 minutes of sunlight left, but it's been about mm, 8 to 10 days since I potted this up, and there's been a lot of growth. Lots of growth in that baby tut. The baby tut pulling out very, very very nicely the creeping jenny you can see also filling out very 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 well the fryer doing their thing hanging out inside the penny wart which isn't really doesn't have much to do with this video with this planter i should say but yeah doing well hasn't been very long i will say the pretoria hasn't done a ton of growing but the australian red canna doing a lot actually it's put on a really good heavy amount of growth here there's some storm damage on some of the foliage in the back it's they pop up new leaves so much it doesn't really matter a little bit of storm damage no big deal mostly that baby tut that i was like hey that has done a lot of growing i should probably just go ahead and do an update right now you can see there's already been a decent amount of growth coming straight out from the bottom and coming on up it's adapting very well i don't think it's going to show but i did end up going through and popping a few more holes around the sides just to let more water in here I prefer the water level on this to be a little bit deeper, but we've had so much rain this season that I've ended up pulling the plug from this side drain right here. 
so that it doesn't overflow because this almost overflowed a few times. And by having that open, I have a little piece of sponge on the other side so that way the baby fish don't get washed out. Yeah, typically I'd want the water to be a little bit deeper than this, but so far everything's okay. Now the pennywort, when the water's deeper than this, they, I like them to be a little bit higher up. They can go, they could actually, I could probably stick them in there and they would do really well, but so far they're fine right there and providing shelter for the fry, so I'm not gonna mess with them. But yeah, less than two weeks, lots and lots of growth doing well. Hey, and you can support the channel by giving the video a thumbs up. Makes a big difference for the channel and for the videos. I do appreciate it, so thank you so much for doing that. And subscribe as well and hit that notification bell, because I upload multiple times a week, and that way you'll know when new videos come out. And comment down below. Say hi. How's everybody doing? All right, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life. Everything's just going wonderfully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.